the, how this topic is designed, number one, then what are the possible questions? Okay. How this topic is designed is a little bit like micro icons. In micro icons, do you remember the first topic? They talked about central problem of economics. They went on to talk about the fundamental questions of resource allocation. Yes, three questions. And from the three questions, they were trying to say, we want to achieve efficiency. We want to achieve equity. To a lesser extent, productive efficiency. Why lesser? Because even the government cannot guarantee that. Okay? So here, we also need to set out what is important in macroeconomics. In microeconomics, we know it's efficiency and equity. So the first thing in national income, okay, is to tell you what really matters. What matters in macroeconomics. Okay? Being an introductory topic, being your first macro topic, they are obliged to do that. Otherwise, subsequent topics, you won't know, hey, why are we looking at inflation? Why are we looking at unemployment? What's the purpose? Okay, this is why. Okay? The second thing, okay, is after they tell you that, oh, in macroeconomics, two things really matter. Number one, you want healthy performance. Performance of the economy. You want healthy performance. Do you know how to measure the performance? How many indicators are there? Okay, very close. Because when you look at performance, you're looking at the whole country, not so much the average resident. So here, we are looking at the four goals. Sustained growth, okay, low unemployment, price stability, healthy balance of payment. Okay, four goals. So the first thing we're interested in is how do you assess whether an economy is healthy? First thing, okay? But you look at microeconomics, we have efficiency concepts, which are very cold, hard conditions. P equals to MC, AE. Lowest cost possible, PE. But econs has a very human side to it. To balance off the very cold and hard figures, in microeconomics, we talk about fairness. We talk about equity as well. Yes, efficiency, very uh, uh, factual. Equity is a bit more human nature. You want to see whether the people are treated fairly, correct? In macroeconomics, the four goals are very cold, hard indicators, right? Growth at all costs, low inflation, low unemployment, healthy balance of payment. So there's another more human side to it. Why is it? Aside from healthy performance, you want to make sure, let's say performance is your house. Oh, a very nice house. But what if the person inside is crying? Mm. Huh? Then very sad, no? Then how? What do you want to assess? Standards of living. We want to also assess living standards of your, not economy anymore, but your average resident. Material and non-material. So by design, SEAB, Cambridge, they sat down together and they will say, in macroeconomics, we need to make sure students understand this first. Okay? I don't need to tell you what the four goals or the indicators. That one, you are beyond that already. Yes? Next question. Do you remember that material standards is measured using a certain indicator? What is it? See if you remember. Material standards, what do we use? GDP? Is it? Ah, Gini coefficient also. Gini coefficient is also very important. Gini coefficient plus GDP. But the GDP we are looking at is a very specific one. Real GDP per capita, right? Plus Gini coefficient. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes we even say untransacted or unrecorded transactions, housewife services. We'll get on to that in a bit. Okay? But also... If you look at the four goals, one of the goals is sustained economic growth, right? Sustained economic growth, we also look at real GDP growth rate. Whether it's actual growth, potential growth, they all contribute to real GDP going up. There's also price stability, blah, blah, blah. Huh? But let me just focus on these two goals. From these two goals, do you realize, A, Real GDP is common. 
to both outcomes. Okay? For both outcomes, real GDP is common, which means how to then measure real GDP becomes a focus. GDP is a very important indicator. It is universal to the macro outcomes. Standard living, performance, both require understanding of real GDP. That's why we want to know how to measure real GDP. Yes? So the next part is a natural progression. Okay, like you say, oh, to be healthy, you need to make sure your cholesterol level is not very high. The next thing we want to know is how then do I uh, check my existing cholesterol level? Okay, not a concern for people your age, right? And I hope well, as a vegetarian, maybe not a concern for me, but, but let's say for a lot of people, it is a concern. So how do you measure real GDP? In econs, we are only interested in one particular thing, which is equilibrium. You don't want to report these numbers to your finance minister. And the finance minister goes to parliament, they realize, hey, the numbers have changed. So we want numbers with no tendency for further change, right? How to measure equilibrium GDP? When I was a student, we had three models. Now, there are only two models. The first model is your circular flow model. Do you all remember the conditions for equilibrium? In the circular flow, it is when the sum of what? Uh, withdrawals equal to the sum of injections, yes? Then, in the AD and AS model, it is when AD equal AS. Okay? Yes? So, how to measure becomes then very important. So, this topic, okay, there are actually just these two parts, okay? Um, how to measure real GDP, how to measure circular flow. Of course, the moment you step into circular flow, you cannot walk away and say, ah, that's about it. You need to understand certain things like, why do you have two models to explain the same thing? Have you ever wondered? Why do we have two models huh? for the same outcome, you know? It's like, why do you have two different colored pens in your pencil case? Because they are for different purpose. Okay, I just text this student who is not here yet. Okay, why do we have two different models? Because they are for two different purposes. Okay, the first one, circular flow. Who came up with it? John Maynard Keynes. You all heard of his name? He's the same guy who came out with AD and AS models. So he came out with both models. Why did he design models to teach laymen like us how the economy works? His purpose of doing this is to demonstrate the multiplier process. Because when it's circular, wow, it's very clear, no? Let me just give you a very quick uh, preview. By the way, today we are using the macro console notes already, uh, not the micro ones, okay? So the... The console notes. Okay, uh, let me just jump to the circular flow model. Okay, so if you look at the circular flow, it was very easy to look at the multiplier process from here. Okay, no need to copy this down, but let's say today there is higher G. Suppose there's higher G today. Straight away from circular flow, you can see who the government is going to call when they want to buy more things. Because the arrow points towards the firms. Yes? So when there's higher G, the government knocks on the firm's door and says, I want more output. Who is the firm going to call for help when they want more output? They will call factors of production, households, right? And households will get higher income. What do households do when they have higher income? They will do CSTM. Right? So this was the first round in the multiplier process. This became your second round. This is known as induced consumption. Okay? So if not for Keynes's circular flow model, it wouldn't be so easy to understand the multiplier. You look at your AD shifting, wow, one time, two times, three times, it's still not very clear. Right? 
So this is a lot clearer when you have your circular flow model. Are we okay? Later, I'll tell you the kinds of questions that can appear for circular flow, right? But for now, okay, uh, it suffices to know that he came up with two models to teach us different things. They call him the father of macroecons. Then who is the father of microecons? Adam Smee, the one who came up with the idea of the price mechanism, okay? You should have mother also, right? I don't know. Maybe that's even higher level econs. So the circular flow is to demonstrate the K process. What about AD and AS model? He wanted to illustrate the performance of an economy. How it's affected and how policies work. So this is more of internal performance. John Maynard Keynes is not famous just in econ's lessons. If you Google, you'll find that he wrote a lesson, he wrote a letter to President Roosevelt during the Great Depression. You all heard of Great Depression in US? The Great Depression ended when US started to spend a lot higher G. Okay, they call it pump priming. They hire people to dig a hole in the road, they hire another group to fill up the hole. Why? Keynes was trying to teach President Roosevelt the idea of the multiplier. 